Join me today on the USFL podcast interview series. I have the pleasure to be joined by recently drafted wide receiver for my Michigan Panthers, nonetheless. Hey. Uh, you know, Jeff Bedette here joining me. Jeff, thank you for tuning in and for coming on the show. How you doing, man? How, how's it? How's it been post draft? I mean, congrats for getting your spot. You know, you're going back into a new league here, getting some more player opportunities. But so, congrats. Man, appreciate it, man. It's uh, very exciting, you know what I'm saying, getting the chance to uh, continue to play the game that I love and being around a, such a great coaching staff and just being able to learn from them. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do. I bet Jeff Fisher's definitely looking forward to, along his staff, looking forward to see what they can get out of you here. Um, it's going to be fun. That's coming up pretty soon. We'll touch on that. I want to go back for a second and kind of just look at how we got here. I always like when I have a player on. I love to get their story. Every player's got a different story. Every player's got a different upbringing into the sport. Um, and I kind of want to get yours, you know. Uh, I guess let's uh, let's turn the clock back, kind of like, say, high school going into college. Because you, okay. you started – you've been in – you were in Power 5 schools this entire time. Uh, but you jumped from you jumped from SEC into, into uh, Big 12 kind of in your yeah. last year. Take us through at least your college years and maybe going into that. Right. So, um, yeah, man, I remember uh, – it's kind of funny how I got the Kentucky offer because – I also did track in high school and I actually got contacted by the track coach. And I remember um, telling him, I'm just like, yeah, I run track, but football first. And I, I literally remember him saying, give me five minutes. And literally like five minutes later, I get a call from Neil Brown and they like offer me a scholarship to come and play football for uh, Kentucky. So, and then also getting a bit of relationship with Coach Scott and Neil Brown and obviously Coach Stoops and listening to those guys really got me to, uh, decide to go in Kentucky and uh, play my career there. And then, um, so yeah, I did play at Kentucky, did what I had to do, but came to a point where I just felt like I needed something new. You know, so I feel like I gave Kentucky everything that I had. I put so much into the program and just felt like I just wanted to go and just, uh, just show my talents on, at the time, a bigger stage with University of Oklahoma. And it's kind of funny because even though I went to University of Oklahoma, I was still tied in with the Kentucky family. Obviously you got the Stoops brothers, and then um, the strength and conditioning staff, uh, Coach Ed, who's the head strength coach at Kentucky, he actually started his career out uh, with the staff at Oklahoma with, mm -hmm. uh, what's my guy named Smitty, with that staff. So I, I, I was just so, I was still tied in. Even though I left, I was still tied in with the Kentucky culture. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of funny. I, I do want to bring it up because it's funny. You got Bob Stoops who got to coach you in the XFL course. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you you got Mark, you know, who's who's his brother, of course, over at University of Kentucky. So, I mean, that had to be a fascinating aspect. I mean, what is there any differences between the two guys that you like noticed like off the gate? I mean, I know you only got one year with Bob, or really five weeks with Bob, and maybe a training <laughs> right. camp, of course. But I mean, there's something that they different manners. They share a lot of similar family traits and how they approach their coaching styles. Man, to be honest with you, it's just like they they probably like one of like the greatest people I probably come across. I don't met so many people, but the Stoop brothers, man, just how they like such player coaches. You know what I'm saying? They sit down mm -hmm. and listen to the coaches. I mean, to the players and want what's best for the players. So I say that's more of a similarity between the two. But obviously, um, Coach Bob was in a different aspect because he kind of went from college to professional. So a lot of a lot of things that he was so into like in college were kind of different because he was more around grown men at the time rather than you okay. get, you know what I'm saying kids coming out of uh, high school and stuff. So that's probably just the only difference is just between the two is just like Coach Stoops probably was way more laid back because he was dealing with like grown men and knew that like we'll take care of our business on our own versus then like you having to worry about like college kids going to class on time, you saying going to study hall on time and stuff like that. So but pretty much this coaching style pretty much the same. I'm pretty sure that you know, Mark, the youngest, I'm pretty sure he looked up to his uh, older brother, Bob, you know what I'm saying, a lot of ways. So they, they pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fascinating. I, I've always, I, you know, it's funny. I, I kind of had been, I watched a little more Kentucky football this year because it kind of hit me for once a little bit on the fact that, you know, here's the, here's where the other one, here's the, here's Mark over yeah, here. Yeah, he turned that program around so much, man. Yes. I'm, just, I'm just glad, I'm just, I'm just glad I was able to, you know what I'm saying, be at the beginning of that and also like, you know what I'm saying, move that program forward to where it is now. Absolutely. I mean, trust me, Kentucky is uh, definitely much more respected program in recent right. years in the SEC. It's quite impressive what they've done. 
Um, but I, I'm glad to get that little perspective there. I think some people like to ask that, you know, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you know, you, you especially when you're a football fam, family, I know that some, some people, you know, it's almost perennial athletes, there's perennial coaches, right, right. you know, so I feel that that kind of connection, especially when someone gets to do it with both, you got to ask about that now for yourself. So, you know, cause we do want to get on that track here, you know, you do, you go to Kentucky, you do a change of scenery going over to Oklahoma. You're with, you're essentially in the class in your final year. You're with Baker Mayfield when he's winning his Heisman trophy season. Right. Um, you know, you get, you put up some stats. Um, but I, from what I've gathered going into, going into the professional scene, maybe a few bumps there. How, how was your experience going in at least maybe looking at the NFL? I mean, you, you had a little bit of time before, you know, at least alternative football came knocking. So, right. Yeah, so uh, pretty much, I, I once I look back at it, man, I pretty I feel like I was kind of overlooked a little bit because okay. a lot of time, a lot of teams that I was talking with, they were just really just focused on like my Oklahoma film, and I'm like, I got a lot of film, and and the SEC is always too to like like for instance, like I don't want to, I don't want to knock DK Metcalf. He's a he's a great guy. Like he's he's a mm -hmm. great player. Don't know, but like I was like putting my stats against like his stats in the SEC. I'm just like, oh, mine was kind of better than DK. You know what I'm saying? And Cause I know I know he got hurt and spent three years, but I only did three years in the SEC also as well. So I was putting my three years versus his three years. So I just felt like I don't know. It was it was just a, it was just a lot of guys. I felt like I was just getting overlooked. That not really a lot of teams wasn't really looking at my production at Kentucky. They were just looking at what well, what he did at Oklahoma. So I guess that kind of hurt me in the process as well. Then I actually blew up the pro day, ran a four two, put up monster numbers. Like if I would have put those numbers in the comments, it would have been the top other receivers. So I just felt like that whole time I was just getting overlooked, man. But you know what I'm saying? You get the cards that you dealt with. So I was just, I just literally was just, I just literally, like I said, was just taking the cards that I was dealt with and just trying to make the most of my opportunity. But yeah, man, my career is, I, if, if I could just name something, it's, it's just pretty much, I would say it's like injuries kind of like hold me, held me back a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, the best availability in the, mm -hmm. in the league is availability. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the best ability in the league is availability. So, um, so with this league right here, I like this like want to show guys that like my 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 playmaking ability, my playmaking ability because I'm way ahead in what I was when I first came out, and I just want to show them that like uh, talent is not the reason why I'm not in the NFL. It's just really like <laughs> injuries, you know what I'm saying? And then like I said, I was just looking forward to going out there and really showing that. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, you're talking your speed. You're talking about. I know you mentioned how track how track kind of got you in there. I mean, a four two seven is no joke for for any 40 yard dash so uh i mean that's that's putting up that definitely shows at least the trait there kind of curious myself with that um you got that speed do you prefer to burn someone on a on a route deep or do you prefer to burn somebody on a short route getting yards after the catch <laughs> man both of them are two great things i felt like i felt like i have a lot of uh players of me probably uh blowing guys deep so i think i must rather like catching a five yard hitch and then really like breaking it to like 80. But a fun fact real quick too, though, um, most people don't even know, like, mm -hmm. like I was fast, but I felt like I went to a whole nother gear after I broke my leg. So I broke my mm -hmm. leg, uh, spring football of my freshman year. Okay. And it was crazy. Cause that, that, that I broke my fibula and that like kept me out for a whole year. Like it literally took me a whole year to get back. Right. And then I don't know what it is, but I just went to like a whole nother, like, a whole nother stratosphere of like speed once once I came back from that injury. So most most people don't even know that. Most people think that like oh he always been fast. Like I always been in that group of fast people. But after I broke my leg, I kind of like kind of separated myself right after that. Um, depend. I mean, recovery from an injury is just is very much important to getting back up to that level. I mean, I would think with physical therapy, you focus enough on that aspect you maybe that just kind of accelerates the process or maybe you get better at at or something along that you know yeah. technique or motor skills possibly <laughs> i remember i remember um oh this is so funny when i look back at it man i remember like sitting down with coach ed which is the head strength coach at kentucky and i just remember sitting down talking i'm like yo coach i cannot lose my speed man i was just i don't know why i was just so scared that i'm thinking that i'll come back slow than what my you know what i'm saying what yeah what i'm uh used to and then he was just like, nah, man, if you keep working now, you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? Just keep working, keep working. You, you'll you be good. And then I ended up, he was right. <laughs> I put the, put, put the work in. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of practice. They say practice makes perfect. So kind of kind of fits the 
<laughs> nonetheless, yeah. but hey, I mean, like, a, no, nonetheless, I mean, great backstory to that. So I appreciate you sharing that that bit. But I mean, still, that that speed's insane. Um, for for yourself, you're talking about, you know, you feel like you've improved since you came out. Um, you, I mean, you've been in Minnesota. You had a stint there, 2018, 19. And again, if I'm referencing facts that I know, so if there's anything different, please let me know. Right. You know, before you went to Dallas for the Renegades, that with right. Bob Stoops and company there, Hal Mummy, at offensive coordinator. Um, and then since then, you've been to, you've been at a lot of stops. You know, Washington, Atlanta, Las Vegas. Um, I know you did a tryout with my Chicago Bears, so I was really, oh, yeah, got yeah, really hyped that, up about dude. that at the time. <laughs> you know, you and Austin yeah, Prowell, dude. so I was I was very much happy to see that. Um, yes, what do you, what do you take from these to help improve? I know every stop's a little bit different. You know that I can tell. Sometimes it's a reserve t- contract. Sometimes it's practice squad. You right. know how, how do you what do you take to help improve while also keeping that? You know I'm got this opportunity. You know maybe it's not it's not say guaranteed i keep that long distance but i hopefully i can grab something get that next step and maybe the next person that looks at me wants me to stay a little longer right so i'm um, glad you asked that man so so start with minnesota i think stop my first out of minnesota probably the best thing that happened to me as far as like me gaining confidence in my play because i was sharing the room with stefan Diggs and adam thielen nice. Diggs is a guy that i'm still close with to this day that continuously coaches me on a lot of things so sharing the room with them and then also uh, in practice going against Xavier Rose and Trey Waynes every single day. So you're going against guys like that, you know what I'm saying? That 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 can only build your confidence. So, so yeah, so with Minnesota, then I went off to uh, Dallas Renegades. And I think going into Dallas Renegades, that, that was where, like, my confidence was, like I said, very, very high. You know what I'm saying? Going in there, doing what I had to do. But obviously, like, COVID kind of messed those things up. And um and then getting inside Washington and actually Washington was a spot that I really thought that I like all right now I'm gonna start you know what I'm saying I can start making a name for myself because that was a uh, team that actually gave me a shot to come in I was on a 53 man roster for most of the season mm-hmm. and one thing that kind of hurt me they kind of uh, picked up guys a free agency and j- ended up drafting a couple of receivers so that was kind of like you know it turned into a business game you know what I'm saying um, sure. So, you know, it's very understandable. But like I said, this past this past year with Atlanta and uh, the Raiders, um, injuries, man, injuries kind of uh, got to me, little soft it, soft tissue injuries because a lot of these teams, I go in and do the workout, and then I you, you feel me, I go in there and, like, make a splash here. They see the speed, and then they sign me. So, obviously, like, the talent is there. Like, they they see it in the uh, in the workouts. But like I said, you got to be – got to gotta stay healthy, man, especially a guy like me. Right. Uh uh, draft a guy, you got to be a guy that's always available, man. So what I take from it is, you know what I'm saying, it's it's, it's, it's a blessing, you know what I'm saying, I always had NFL dreams and even being able to just get in the uh, NFL. As you can see behind me, I got some NFL jerseys behind me that I can uh, put up on my wall. <laughs> but it's, oh, yeah. it, it's, it's just such a humbling and blessed experience, man, just to be able to uh, say that I was in there and being able to learn from so many people, you know what I'm saying, being around such great guys like – Getting a chance when I was with the Raiders, getting a chance to see Deshaun Jackson. Like that's a guy that would like I've been watching since since middle school, man. You know what I'm saying? And being able to share a uh, locker room with him. And like I said, also with like Stefan Diggs and Adam Thing, like those are like top of the receivers in the NFL. So it's really just a, a just a true blessing, man. And I also just see light at the tunnel, you know what I'm saying? And I it mm-hmm. literally showed me that I can really be in here with these guys, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much what I took from it. You know, I had someone bring up to me the other day, you know, talking about imposter syndrome, you know, you get that thing where it's like, do I really belong here? So I, right, I, right. I've, I see that validation. I completely understand that, you know, I mean, if you're getting picked up by enough teams, they want to see you getting a look, obviously you got <laughs> something that they want out of you. So, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Like I said, I don't, I don't did work out with some NFL vets that was been in seven, eight years in the league. And here's a guy like me, they picking me over them. You know what I'm saying? So right. <laughs> so no, like I said, the talent, like the, like the the talent is there, man. It's just like I said, it's just those soft tissue injuries that I can that I just need to overcome, and you know what I'm saying? Like it, there's light at the tunnel. Mm. You, hey, hey, the USFL is going to give you an opportunity. I'll tell you what, though, like you're saying, that's a nice jersey collection you got in this video. <laughs> Yo, here you laid that out pretty well. <laughs> well. Man, I, hey, started with started with high school, and then all the way down to Washington. So hopefully, I can put up a USFL jersey up next. Yeah, you're gonna that Panthers jersey. What do you think of that thing, man? You like you like oh, the colors? Man, it's, it's so nice, man. I'm I'm actually right now uh working with a guy right now to uh to, with some gloves, man. I don't want to say too Ooh. much, but I know we having some 
He customized some gloves for me that's with the uh, Michigan Panther color, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I'm, none, I'm of us have, none of us have forgotten the uh, Michael Jackson bad oh, the visor. <laughs> visor at all. That That is like, if if you look back at just the XFL alone, like that, oh, I think that's man. one of the photos that floats around all the time is just that photo of you in training camp. <laughs> yeah man xfl man that was such a that was such a fun league man oh my god like so sorry that covid ended up anything but that that was literally like there was a that, there was a time where you i remember you mentioned the imposter syndrome and i yeah. I, I went through that like i went through thinking about like man do i really belong to none of them but xfl really like i'm pretty sure a lot of guys can really uh say this but xfl was a time where like where a lot of guys were gaining the love of football again, you know what I'm saying? Being able to go out there and just have fun, you know what I'm saying? Not too much of the business side, not too much of worrying about is you gonna be here today or tomorrow. And it was just, it was just literally just like, if I can compare it to anything like high school football again, like to be honest, like just the love of the game. So, and then as you can see, I'm having fun with the visor. They let me, they let me wear the visors, and it was they're promoting it so much, man. It was just so much fun, man. Right. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to at least your apparel with the gloves. Like I said, I'm not I'm not shocked at all that that's going to be something you're going to be rocking rocking with here uh, for the USFL. Like so, I, speaking of that, now we we get to this point, you know, in the story. Um, when when does the USFL come in into play? I know you've been you had plenty of opportunities within the last year that you've been here. I know the league was looking for some talent yourself. Um, they're looking for younger guys. They've been saying, you know, you you yourself kind of fit the bill. Um, I mean, do you have that background? Someone reach out to you. You have an agent that goes to them. Yeah. So, man, good question. So, um, t so going back to the NFL. So, the NFL is a league where you got to continuously update your resume. Like, right. They're not going off of what you did. Pat, you literally got to update your resume. So, me and my agent literally were sitting down and realized that I didn't really get a chance to do that because I missed out of preseason and when I got to the Raiders, couldn't even do anything as well. So, we looked at the USFL as a chance to continue to play the game that I love and also get some film out there. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm trying to remember how I even got into it. I just remember uh, there was a link where you had to sign up for them to send you a contract. Okay. I remember reaching out to uh, one of my guys and he sent me the link, told my, me and my agent, my agent actually recommended me that I put my name into it as well. So, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much how I went. I, I'm looking at it as continuing to play the game I love and also getting some film to show NFL that I can still, you know what I'm saying, play, play a little bit. <laughs> 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 hey, I resume updating for this position for a especially receivers. I could only imagine the just having to keep that. That's a very competitive spot on a football roster. That those in defensive backs, I feel like you go through so much rotation. Oh, yeah, Even running backs, that. you know, a lot of the specialty guys that are the offensive pieces or the outside and tangible defensive de folks. You know, I feel like those guys have a lot of rotation that people kind of go and plug in and out really quickly. So yeah, but I, I also think the USFL is doing a also a good job too. It's kind of like the limited roster spots, man. The thirty eight man sure, roster. Sure, sure. I remember talking to um, my OC with the Michigan team. Uh, he said we're going to be running with four receivers, so that seemed like going to be on the field most of the time, like even but all the time. So I think that's I think that's another good thing as well. Like guys really going to be able to uh, showcase their talent because you literally just going to be out there. <laughs> So I mean, they've been coaches have been saying this in social media. You're expecting to put up points, then, like you're right. you're expecting these offenses that they're saying to be explosive. Shea Patterson's going to be dropping dimes to you every chance he gets. You know, right, man. I'm man, I'm so looking forward. And it's funny too. I can also uh, add this too. So me and my agent was talking, and he literally asked me, like, man, so what team do you really like want to play for?" And so crazy, I ended up on a team that I really wanted to play for. Like, oh. I wanted to, yeah, I would like, I want to get on the Michigan team. You know, saying they got. NFL experience, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to get coached by an NFL coach, you know what I'm saying, with Jeff Fisher. So my agent literally reached out to them, and then they, the, the feelings were mutual. Like, remember Coach Fisher calling me? He was just like, he was glad he was able to uh, come and grab me. So it ended up working out how, how it was supposed to. What are the odds? What let are me, the odds? Me, <laughs> yeah, I know. What are the odds? That, that's crazy. You know, I, I that's what makes me happy. Like, I for myself, like I said, I get to see somebody enjoyed in one league go to the one I'm – cheering for here and now right. i gotta talk to that guy it, it adds a little extra <laughs> to this interview i'm no I'm no no joke you know get to talk to somebody that i get to root for personally here come april, man, come april 16th, that, you know that's great yes sir for, for yourself as a player and this this kind of pertains into the how the league's doing this do you do you thrive off energy of a crowd or are you just you're just happy to be on the field that's what gets your energy because i it's a hub format you're not in michigan to start this year you know, right. it's going to be Birmingham, whoever shows up most likely, or right. Stallions fans when you play the Stallions. 
Right. <laughs> nah, so uh, uh, I don't know if this makes sense. I know a lot of guys can uh, agree with this as well. Man, I don't really hear anything on the field, man, which is weird. Like, it's like okay. every time I'm on the field, the only time you hear something is either a big play just happened or a big hit just happened. That's the literally only time I hear something. But most of the time, I don't really hear nothing. I'll be just zoned in, making sure I'm a guy that don't like making any mistakes, man. So I'm really just trying to be locked in and making sure I'm doing my job to the best of my ability. So I think just more, I, I think just more so just being able to, like I say, play the game is what I'm excited for. Like that, that, that's what gets me going. Like just as soon as I step between them lines, I'm already ready to go. Like it can literally be nobody in the stands and I'll just be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, like it was um the 2020 season when literally they weren't allowing no fans in the NFL. And I just remember uh crazy when I lined up my first game was against the Dallas Cowboys and I just was like thought it was so crazy there was nobody in the stands but you know what I'm we had to get ourselves going so yeah man I'm just a guy that as soon as I step between those lines man I'm ready to go you have any spot that sticks out that's like damn this place was really I can't believe the intensity I know you say you zone it out but I mean you have one that at least maybe you're like college or pro you're like okay maybe maybe I don't oh, yeah, to go back you <laughs> yeah, know SEC course. football gets pretty loud yeah, so 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 I'm glad so in the SEC my personal best stadium is South Carolina okay they every fan will have a white ties and they'll literally blast a sandstorm loud like really loud in the stadium <laughs> everybody throwing other the tiles so that's the number one stadium in the SEC uh man I remember Oklahoma when we uh play Ohio State week two Remember, I remember that. That was yeah. a night game. That was live. But if I had to pick a Big 12 state, I would say Baylor. Baylor probably, probably one of the loudest. And then the NFL, I remember I was on the Peace squad with Minnesota, but I, I ended up traveling when they played Seattle and that stadium. Oh, mm. man. So, yeah, those would be my three. I got South Carolina in the SEC. I got Baylor in the Big 12. And then NFL probably the Seattle Seahawks. Baylor, that, that that one, that's fast. Right, that kind of socks you, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I know they, they have a respectable program, don't get me wrong. Right. But, like, I just kind of thinking out how to bid for Big 12 schools, I'm like, okay, hey. Right, man, yeah, <laughs> you know? I was like, I mean, I'm looking around, I'm just like, ooh, this stadium is rocking, man. But, like, shout but then, out, but then again, shout out Waco, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, don't get me wrong, but then again, it was a, like, you know, it was Oklahoma, so literally, like, everybody's getting up against us, like. So I can literally name any stadium out like that's like they play in Oklahoma, so they everybody wanted to come and see that. So right, <laughs> what are the odds? I'll have to mark those down. You know, need to start going to more places like like that. But South Carolina, Baylor, and it's funny you mentioned the Ohio State game. That would have been uh that would have been the flag game, right? That was Mayfield the flag sticking. game. That was mm -hmm. the flag game. <laughs> <laughs> that was the flag game. No joke. That was so funny because I literally I remember seeing Baker running with. Him. I'm like, okay, okay. Then he was kind of going to the to the middle of the field. I'm like, oh, what's like what's going on here? And then <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait. I'm over here like, oh, what is he about to do? And then I don't know. It's a video like you literally see me like running like behind him, and as soon as he sticks, and I like jumps like I we all like jump up. So crazy. <laughs> <laughs> memories being made, school history being made, right? Man, there. so many, That's so many memories saying. during that season. Man, it was crazy. No joke. So for so for this year, I kind of want to ask, like, so you talk the resume, you know, I, I get I get that part with the pan with the Panthers there. You're getting actual playing time, you know. It looks like it's you know the league looks very stable in terms of financially. So expectation is you get to play a whole season, hopefully more. You know, you get you can make a run into July 3rd and be in Canton. Right. Um, what, what? Oh man, that's what, right. Hearing that news is crazy. Yeah, I mean that one that one alone. I mean, you get to play. Hall of Fame campus, essentially. Yeah. So right, right where all the legends have their busts. That's kind of cool to think about. Yeah, that, oh. that, that was that was some huge news right there. Mm -hmm. And I, and I would, I mean, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how that plays. I haven't been to Hall of Fame myself since. Have you, have you been? By the way, no, I never got a chance to. I know, I know a lot of guys really got a chance to because of them being the first preseason game. So I never been on a team where like you know what I'm saying we had the first preseason game in the Hall of Fame stadium. So I never got a chance to. Awe inspiring stuff, you right. know. If you you get that chance, you definitely go. Or if you make it there, this right. you make it there this okay. summer, you go. <laughs> I, I feel like we got a, I'm, I'm with this team. We got, I feel like we got a great chance to to do that. Yeah, I, I'm very confident in, in you guys. Um, what what are you looking to get out of this year besides just a resume piece? You know, you have any you have anything that's like okay, I'm drafted. I'm in. I'm on Jeff Fisher's squad. Now I got to go set out and do A, B, and C. What 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 would at least two of those three be? Um, so I I, I think with football, what's is such a great thing is is uh being able to build connections with guys with people. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm looking at this to being able to, you know what I'm saying, meet new people, build a relationship with those guys, because you never know, like, relation, connections and relationship can go a long way. So I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, I don't know, I, I, I'm going to continue to say just, just continue to play the game that I love, man. I just want to go out there and just help the team the best way possible. Like, it can it can be anything, man. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just so eager to just go out there and being able to just play football, you know what I'm saying, don't have any worries about, like I said, if, if I'm going to be here today or not the next day. So <laughs> so I think those would be the two things, just being able to meet new people, build connections, like, because I, I don't want this to just be like this season here and then we go our separate ways. Like, I want this to be like, this, this is going to be my first time meeting Shea Patterson, it's going to be my first time meeting Paxton Lynch, first time meeting Jeff Fisher and a lot of other guys. So I want that to be something that, like, even though we're, when it comes to a point where we're done playing the sport, that I can really still reach out to those guys. So that's what I said I'm looking forward to. I'd say that's fair. And I think a lot of like so a lot of us are looking forward to see you play. A lot of us are just looking to wait and excited to get this this rolling here. What's your schedule looking like right now? I know you got training camp coming up the twenty first of March. We just rolled into March a few days ago as we're recording. Right. But you know, it's it's short. It's coming up here. Um what do you what's currently like right now for you and then just moving into the twenty first? So today was actually the first day that um we started Zoom meetings with our coaches. So okay. we got a, got a chance to do that. And pretty much I'm just uh, working out, man, and just like continue to just stay and say what I've been doing. So uh, so I know I know uh, we was told to actually report on the 21st. So that'll be the day that I'll come in uh, Bama. So I'm just literally just going to work out until it's time for us to uh, to report. All right. Awesome. Well, looking forward to uh, seeing you there or at least a. Uh watch you play hope i don't know maybe catch you on the weekend we're gonna be down there on april 16th funny enough so you know, oh, okay you maybe. guys okay you guys are yeah. man so, another thing too man where you get that gear from man you're looking real this? good that michigan panther shirt yeah man no, no joke this was uh <laughs> this was part of the original merch series before they switched to the new stuff so oh, really this is part of the drop shirt drop ship uh items oh okay 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 yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I love this. This thing turned out great. Not to brag on on the recording, but seriously, this thing turned out really well. So I got to rep it when I can on these shows. Right, I feel that, man. Feel that. Yeah, but I'm, but yeah, this thing's great. I'm say I got to get myself when they come available jersey anyway and get that all set up. Um, but yeah, Jeff, Jeff, thanks for joining the show. Really appreciate your time with this. Looking forward to seeing you play. Best of luck this year and. Uh, same goes to your uh, team as well. You know, I, I know I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> man, man, you I, definitely I, I, have I really, the largest fan base out there that's going to be behind you too. <laughs> man, I really appreciate you reaching out, man. This is something that I'm looking forward to do. And like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys when the season starts. All right. Jeff Bennett, receiver for the Michigan Panthers. Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. And Jeff, catch you next time.